weightless Texas rig, five inch lunker log. Let's get it. GoPro check, got my extra batteries on the portable charger, sweet. Got the Subaru, you can barely see, um, but we need, we need a couple more things. We need this, got it. Yeah, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Weston Smith. We've got to go meet up with our buddy Tate and hit the water. I'm going to meet him at a pond and we are going to get after him. 78 degrees out and uh, yeah, it's going to be a bunch of fun. Let's go. So, we just got here. Uh, Tate has rolled up. Very un-Texan like. He just completely avoided the shade. This looks so perfect and he's just out there in the sun. Me, I'm sunburnt over here having gone out this morning without any screen. So I had to get the uh, stone brewing hat. Needless to say, we're here and I think he's got maybe a new bait caster that we might need to spool some line on. I'm not 100%, yes? yes? Oh, let's get it. Let's. Look at this. Bam, is this a seven? Seven two, medium heavy. This is what you guys need. Look, if you want an all around combo, seven two medium heavy gets it done. This is sick all right and then we got some seaguar line bam you might get some shit for the red label but um but seaguar is good if, if you get the expensive shit <laughs> Bone on the budget here. 15 pound this is perfect 15 pound fluorocarbon is the steez this is what you need all right how does fishing line work amber alert i've been going off all day i haven't got one before. really you're with Verizon or something. Uh, you can turn straight. them off? Yeah, straight. You can turn Yeah, you can turn them off on your uh, phone. I didn't know that. Your settings. Bait caster in years, man. Wait, everything you have is spinning? Yeah. I keep forgetting. Yeah. The spool cylinder, good call. It seems very narrow. Some of them seem a little bit thicker. Interesting. This is always the fun part. So we fed the line through all of the rod guides and also important, the real guide. This guy right here. Have to feed it through there, otherwise you're in trouble. Now you get the line to go around the spool, and when you're just running gun like Tate and I, it can be a challenge, so let me go ahead and get this. Okay, so we made it around the spool, and now we're just tying a quick little double knot, nothing crazy. This is probably less than most of y'all will do at home. This is how I've always done it, and it's always worked. So, just two little knots. Any, any old knot will get the job done. That's cinched down tight. Now we're gonna cut the tag end, and then we just start cranking. Chances are, oh, the drag is pretty tight. Yeah, the drag is actually pretty tight. I was gonna mention that you kinda wanna tighten that drag up, but this one's already done. So this one is just very simple. It's like already, see how the see how the line is kinda fucked, it's all loose? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. So the way to avoid that, you guys, from your line getting on the spool very loosely, is you, you hold the line with like a little bit of tension out here. You know, it doesn't have to, it could be anywhere. It could be right here, you can go further up, that doesn't matter. Just hold the line with a little tension in front of the reel, then start cranking, and now look at how smooth it's going onto the spool. Please observe. Now it's going on the spool nice and tight. All right, let's crank, crank, crank. Let's try and burn Tate's fingers. <laughs> so we're about 15 seconds, 20 seconds in. Oh, starting to burn my fingers. And you want to crank it till about the close to the edge of the, pretty close to the edge of that. You can leave a an eighth of an inch or so, that's probably appropriate. Uh, eighth inch to a quarter inch. You don't necessarily want to spool it all the way up to the very edge because then sometimes it'll affect the cast for a little while until you start cutting a little bit more line down when you're retying knots and whatnot. This is probably, yeah, that's, that's great, that's great. Line is on the spool. That took about three minutes for y'all at home thinking you can't do it with a bunch of tools. You really don't need much. It's very simple, fast and easy. Now you know how to do it. Get you a Weston. That's get you a need. get you a bait caster. You're good to go, pretty much, partner. So I want to crank that Tate actually got in one of his mystery tackle boxes. If you guys are unfamiliar with the subscription service that is Mystery Tackle Box, uh, shame on you. But secondly, you can actually try your first one for as low as $4.99 with the link in the description. So don't be afraid to check that out and give them a shot. Uh, I think even the entry level box that you can try for your first month at $4.99 you will get like 15 to 20 bucks worth of lures if not oh if not a palomar knot if not more so it's definitely worth it different way of discovering new lures like this crankbait right here which is supposed to slay but we're about to put it to the test aren't we I believe this is a lucky craft crankbait tied on utilizing the palomar knot 15 pound fluorocarbon is what he bought at the store and that's uh, very good for all around use basically across the states 15 pound fluorocarbon is just where it's at uh, now with crankbaits, 
fluorocarbon is pretty important because it sinks. The density causes it to sink, so it'll help these crankbaits get their full depth that they're rated for on the box. They're always rated for up to a certain depth, and they'll hit that with fluorocarbon. And not only that, but 12 pound fluorocarbon is the rating a lot of them are based off of. And this is 15 pound here, so he's pretty much gonna get that full depth. But another reason why 15 in this case could be good is because oftentimes in Texas, you're fishing around structure and stuff you could get caught on, and there's less chance of breaking off. The fish could take you under some heavy cover, and so that 15 pound is just a little bit extra strength. And we're fishing a shallow pond today, which means we don't need a whole lot of depth. So so 15 pound line is gonna be uh, fantastic for this setup here. Let's get young Tate to fishing. Thanks, sir. It's a pleasure. I mean, the crankbait would be just fine, but when you get it closer to you, it. you'll have to let it sit and, and just whip it up here. I'm gonna start off with the, I'm gonna start off with the Ned rig, just something small. Yeah, wacky rig, the Ned rig. Yeah, with the wind, maybe a crankbait would be better. I don't know. I thought maybe he had it, but he didn't. Oh, did you have a bite? Dang. It's actually starting to look good. Never been done before at this pond. Look, there's a little bait fish. Maybe we should throw here. Yeah, dude, I always end up getting bites right here, so I'm curious to see what it looks like. Let's cast towards the grass for half a second. Oh, yes, dude, you got him. Such a good catch right there on the wacky rig. Easy money. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Double up. <laughs> I'm telling you, just let take it. I think they're in these rocks, dude. That's why we need. Yeah, we'll we'll stand up here. I bet we'll get a bunch off this thing. A little happy. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take them. Healthy looking, dude. Oh. oh, he hopped. That was sick. There's a hopper, man. All right, I want some fish. We gotta walk over there. <laughs> Dang. So when you caught that guy, you were like in the shallow. Yeah. I'm gonna throw the little Sakoshi bug. This one got me my other fish today. They're, I just haven't used them very much, but yeah, every time I've used yeah, them, they seem to be fine. Yeah, this one's like half of a Sakoshi bug. I was going to say, I was like, are they really that small and hard? No, no, no. There we go. First cast, that was easy. First cast. You. Oh, oh, he gone, he gone. He, oh, there he goes, there he goes. First cast on a Sakoshi bug, that's what I'm talking about. Fall finesse, baby. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I usually just pull the other, yeah, like the knots around the, the, like, theoretically these, this one and this one that are kind of like wrapped around that line. What happened here, folks, is Tate didn't have it on max braking. Anytime you get a new reel, just toss it on mass break, max brakes, that way you get a good feel for it. And then we'll also play with the tension just to make sure that's pretty tight. And then this probably won't happen again. That's pretty smooth. There's just a little bit more that we want to make sure is free and clear. And then we're locked and loaded. So you can do the same thing. Yeah, just yeah, okay. just keep it tight. Crank that in. We'll probably have zero issues. The brakes are on two, which is pretty much minimum, which is exactly why he effed that up. But not only that, so we've now got it on maximum. But the tension, which is this knob here, if we open the spool, yeah. So the crankbait's not even falling. So that's not that's that's good as far as um, that's not ideal, but it means that it was helping a lot. So we'll loosen that until the crankbait starts to fall slowly. When the crankbait starts to fall slowly, that is uh, where you want it. So that's, that's appropriate for uh, optimum casting distance, yet the right braking. So now I'm gonna drop it down a little bit because it's treble hooks. Oh, they were messed up and then I just, I flipped it loose, but the treble hook was around the nose. So now he's on max braking and the uh, tension's right. So, oh, it's still, it's still loose. Okay, so that all, all you gotta do is just make sure you use your thumb. So let me bring it back in. So even on max brakes, let me tighten the tension up a little bit more actually. Maybe that maybe that's better. Just a little bit. Let me try it again. There we go, that was pretty good. Okay, um, it should be as dialed in as it's gonna get. Mm -hmm. But if you cast it and you don't like fling it really hard, like you're just casting it and you wanna go not too far, just be aware and use your thumb a little bit, like lightly, and it'll be good to go. Oh, I just got a bird's nest on the DC because I hit the wall. Just talking about this, dang it. Yeah, the SLX DC can't protect you from being an idiot and hitting walls. Dang it, this is my first bird's nest on this reel. Like, bad one. I've gotten a couple where I've like had to pick out a couple pieces, but it's nothing like this. I hit this concrete wall when I cast it and it just went doink and totally messed up the momentum. They just got a hog on the crank, boy. 
I was right there too. Yeah, usually they'll chase it up and kind of hit it at the bank. Charlie done got off the hook. <laughs> nice. First one on the new bait caster and the mystery tackle box crank. And he's off to the races. Got one. Got one. All right, there we go. This one could actually be like a pound. I feel some weight to him. Sweet, just letting that wacky rig sink. Well, I keep saying wacky rig. <laughs> it's, it's a weightless Texas rig. I think this guy had it for a minute. Yep. Got him, dude. What'd you see? I saw the fish. You saw him flop? I thought you were like way around the corner. If I can get those pliers, I think he like really choked it. Let's see what happens. It was actually like right out that way. Um, I cast it like directly between the rocks and that grass there, like just straight okay. out from, from my point. Dang it. There we go. Saved by the bell. Gosh darn. Weightless Texas rig, five inch lunker log. Let's get it. Oh, next cast we got bites. I don't think he's got it though. Oh, something does have it. Let's get him. Tate, we found him. <laughs> back to back. Back to back on the weightless Texas rig. <laughs> oh shoot. Lunker log getting them on the days when nothing else will because they are playing hardball Back-to-back -back cast though. That was uh, Unexpected. I think every time I've said can we go three for three we never do so Let's see if we can break the curse in position Now the key is don't with it. Don't reel don't pop it. Just let the fish eat it <laughs> Got to fish slow when they're in this type of mood Unless you're Tate and you're catching one of crankbaits. Yeah, so for me, they've been getting it on the drop pretty good. So I didn't go three for three, but I feel like me popping it along the bottom nice and slow is just not getting anywhere. Oh, that was way to the left. Let's retrieve that. And so what I'm thinking is I just need to cast it, let it drop, and then if they don't bite it within like the first 30 seconds, just reel it back in and recast it. Because what I seemed to be noticing was like those two that hit in a row, I think were both like right after I cast it as it was making like its initial descent. So I think they like it at like a certain height, like maybe they're hanging out at a certain depth. And then like once you get down to the bottom, it doesn't seem like maybe they're not really looking down today. Devin's calling. I think we're going to have to go see the Joker soon, so I might have to even split it. Are you going to see the Joker? Yeah. Have you seen it? It's got good reviews. Oh, oh, you're on right now. He's got one. He's got a big one. What I do is I pull a little line. Well, let me open this up just for a second. Okay. Uh, I pull a little line and I bend it. Then as soon as I release that, I also release this tension and it gives it like a little extra slack. Yeah. And sometimes you have to do it a few times in a row, but it freed it. And it, it doesn't always work. But <laughs> I hope like, you were filming. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe I was. Yeah, I was. It doesn't that's... always work, but like it's it's usually pretty good. God, this feels weird. A right-handed spinning reel. Oh, so you awkward. Left? You can you can switch it. Yeah. I well, switch it's it. not that I'm left, but every time I've used a spinning rod, it's on the left. So this is just very different. All right, guys, well, that about sums it up. A couple fish apiece. They hit the wacky rig, the Sakoshi bug, if I'm not mistaken, the weightless Texas rig with the lunker log. They hit the, did you throw the, Mystery oh, there was the, it was the MTB crank. It yeah. wasn't even the lipless. He was throwing a lipless for a little while and didn't get anything, then switched over to the wacky rig. You didn't get anything on the wacky rig either. The one. You the did. The lunker log, yeah. All right. So? Uh, watermelon red flake. Two apiece. Watermelon red flake did the deal. Uh, Till next time, you ready for uh, some more fishing? Of course. All of course. right. Let's get after it. Till then, y'all. Peace. <gasps>